Blessed be the name of the Lord. This afternoon, I want to welcome you. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus, wherever you are. May God bless you. May God keep you. Glory be to the, glory be to God, the Most High. I know this afternoon we are all ready to listen to the Word of God, and God is going to speak to us because He has done it before. Even today, His heart, our Bishop has the Word of God in His heart, and God is going to speak to our lives in the name of Jesus. As we continue to listen to our God, the word God has put in our bishop, connecting to the to God's power, may you receive the revelation of the word. May you receive the power to understand him and to know him better through the word that bishop is going to preach and to teach us this afternoon. Welcome. I'm James Mwangi, born again, Christ is Lord. I'm well in the name of Jesus. And I know God is going to help us to understand him better through the word he has put in our bishop. We want to pray for our bishop as he comes. Prepare yourself. Have your notebook. Have your Bible ready. Because the word is going to transform us in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. This afternoon we know that God has your purpose to, 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 to speak to us through the word you are put in our bishop. As we listen to the word, may it transform us. May it, have a, 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 may it change our way of thinking, our way of doing things, because that's the purpose we have for us. We give you honor and glory. We adore you. We magnify your name. We pray for our bishop as he comes. Continue to bless him. Continue anointing him even more for your glory and for your honor. We thank you and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Bishop, in the name of Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Connecting to the power of God. That's our message. We need to connect just as you can plug in a socket and your fridge starts functioning. You plug in power and your video camera start operating. You plug in some power and amplifier and maybe a big industrial uh, plant just start functioning because the summer with main connection. I say, one of the things, you have a lot of potential, but you need to be connected. Get somewhere whereby the power of God is so real to you. God bless you. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo reaching out to you from Nairobi. Apostolic Faith Church, I tell you, God loves you. Yes, another way to you to get into God's power, an experience with God, whereby the manifestation, you know, it's not good to have God who is silent throughout. The Bible says you used to follow idol gods. But now we have God who speaks. He walks. At least somewhere, you see the living characteristics of eternal God at work. You can speak like David who said, I've seen God when I killed Ryan. I've seen God when I killed Bear. And God yet will be one, like one of them. It's good to attest like the person in John chapter 9 who was blind, extremely blind. He was healed. Healed completely by Christ. And when he went around, people said, oh, who healed you? Who healed you? Who healed you? And there was controversy. There was confusion. There was criticism. He said, no, no. Even if you drain all the facts, even if you drain all the facts, you cannot challenge the fact that I was blind but now I can see the fact of manifestation. You know, people can challenge you. People are philosophers. People are philosophers. And uh, when people have those funny philosophers, you can, they can affect you. You know, you go to a class like Greeks. Eh? You remember the church, church in Cori there, when Paul was preaching there, and Paul had to approach those people, those Greek philosophers, in another method, because he said, now I need to, I need to plug these people in God's power. You know, Paul said, when I came to you, I did not use funny, enticing words. Uh -huh. I did not do that. Uh -huh. Because, you know, he said, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us, who are being saved as a part of God. Mm -hmm. And then, if you go to verse 22, for Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach 
Christ crucified for the Jews is a stubborn block. To the Greeks who are philosophers, notism, you know those groups, they are, it is foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and, and the wisdom of God. You remember, and Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come to you with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness in fear and in much troubling and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be built in the wisdom of man but in the power of god that's the truth before we other people you know you, you know you can set, set a standard and then another wisdom that comes we agree that standard. No, you can't have wisdom of men and then the power of God you come and align with the wisdom of men. It's God who demonstrates his power and people know the kind of God you are preaching if, and that you determine what to be accepted and not what to be accepted. We want to preach in power and that's why we accept the power of God. We plug in the power. I say we plug in the power. If you read Mark chapter 5, is the book of plugging in. It's plugging in. We have the issue of the woman who had the issue of blood. Look at that, that, that woman. Uh -huh. The woman who had the issue of blood. It starts with Jesus stepping in the land of Gadolins where there was a man who used to live in the tubes, a man who had more than 2,000 demons, Raj, fleet of demons in one person and the Bible says all people had given up if you read in Mark chapter 5 the Bible says in verse 2 he who had his dwelling among the tubes, the tubes and no one could bite him not even with chains that's powerful and you go around verse 4 also says because he had often been bowed with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and shackles broken places, neither could anyone tame him. Life has those extremes. No one could tame him. Look at this issue. No man could bite him, and no man could tame him. Do you have such an issue? No person can bite that issue, not even tame it. It could be a character, it could be a person, it could be a child, it could be a husband. You flip your husband, nothing is working. I said to you, Christ stepped in. And when Christ stepped in, the Bible says, when, in verse 6, when he saw Jesus from far, he ran and worshipped him. I said to you, friends, there are things, there are men, there are situations, there are they are their stubbornness, their characters that are disturbing us. And we can say like the way that it is, no one could tame, no one could handle. But let me tell you, no one should deceive you. Jesus overcame death. Live around that man, that woman. He overcame death. And if you can bring Jesus to the real situation, it has to bow. We have seen powerful people bow. I say no one can withstand the power of the resurrection of Christ, the office that Christ is operating from, the right heart of God the Father. I say to you friends, we need to plug into that power. And that's why in Mark chapter 5, you realize uh, when Jesus stepped in, this man just fell and those unclean demons were cast out. I admire the outcome. Eh? If you go to verse 17, and then they came to Jesus. And so the one who had been demon possessed and had the legend, had the legend. Well, what happened? Uh, they saw him. Legend is uh, thousands of demons. And legend, sit, they fell 
found him sitting. This man never used to sit. All day and night. Now he's sitting. Number two. Now he's there. Eh? Number two. Clothed. This man never used to wear clothes. Ever, ever. He remained naked. Now he's clothed. Number two. In his right mind. This man never had his right mind. What he had is the mind of demons. Do when, you, when demons possess you, they possess your mind. And they use your mind as their mind. And you speak the way they speak. Now this time he has his right mind. Can, can, you, can you imagine? Untamed. Unhardled. No one could tame. No one could handle. But when Christ came, demon fell. And eventually it ended up the man who was possessed, even with religion, had an outcome which is so clear and can happen to your family. Seated. Very well. Settled. Sitting means settled. Settled. Number two, clothed. Clothed means covered. Covered with glory. Covered. Identity. And right mind means talent, right gifting. Those three outcome of deliverance. And it will happen if you plug in those who cannot be tamed, those who cannot be held, can be tamed by the power of Christ. Jesus is ready to appear. He can appear. He's, not, he's the same today and forever. If you go deeper, you see now this woman, the issue of the, uh, the, 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 the issue of of the, uh, the, 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 the synagogue leader. Verse 22. Jailers. The ruler of synagogue came. Jailers by name. And he saw Christ. And he felt his, his, his feet. His family's connection. Why? He begged him. That is Mark 5.23. Ernest is saying. My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Jesus as he walked, walked, walked. Now there's an issue here. A certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, suffered from many physicians, lost everything and she just became worse, worse, worse. Immediately came after Christ and said, verse 28, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made, low, made whole, made well. Immediately the fountain of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of affliction. Power started flowing. Power beyond men. Power beyond physicians. Power beyond any evidence, any ability, any field of uh, expertise. Power flowing. And power instantly healed. Let me the truth. Human beings, we all require that level. We understand we have done our best. But this stubborn issue should not just live as if there's no one who has answer final. Doctors are doing their best, but there should be access to Christ. Look at this issue. These are two levels of physician. There's this group. This woman suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but she grew us. This is true in this life. Not that physicians were bad, but the situation could not be handled by them. In their endeavor to make it better, they made it worse. And she lost all her property in paying physicians. But Jesus, the, another physician, in his own way came. He just, he just need to operate on her. He just need to release the power of the situation. If I touch, what does it mean by touching? If I touch him, I'll be healed. I'm making my own way of connection. Touch! And power came out of Christ. Instantly, the woman tried and she knew she was healed. Two things, three things happened. Drying, immediate drying. Two, the woman knowing very well, I'm healed. Three, Jesus instantly knowing, power has come out of me into somebody. And the woman said, and Christ eventually said, woman, go home. Daughter, was at four. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Be totally healed. In others, that affliction will never come back again. I say, and while, while they are saying that, can you imagine, Jesus is still walking to Jairus' house to heal a daughter on point of death, 12 years old daughter. Before Jesus healed a woman with issue of blood for 12 years while going to heal a daughter 12 years sick. But as they approached, people came and said, why disturb Jesus? 
Jairus, stop. The daughter is dead. Jesus did not put the, Jesus cannot withdraw his mission because things are worse. All what you do, he will produce the next level of his power. You expected him to heal, now he can also come and do something better. He can raise from the dead. You expected him to give, to give you money, eh? maybe had a thousand, whatever, naira or shillings or lots of dollars, and, and, and things are getting worse. Christ can get to the worst. Don't believe Jesus only in one way. Can you imagine when these people came and said, don't disturb the master, your daughter is dead. Christ took over. You know, it is this man who was leading Christ to his house. But this time, Christ took over and said to gentlemen, do not be afraid and don't listen again to them. Do this. However complicated this issue is, just put your trust in me and follow me. Let me show you another level of my power. Let me show you another level of my compassion. Let me show you another level of my masses. Let me show you another level of my operation. Follow me. And Christ reduced the number of people he had. Disciples, three. Nine, beat up behind. Multitude, beat up behind. He chose Peter, John, and James. They went to the house and said to the daughter, rise up. And at the, on their way, he also sacked and threw out commercial mourners. And the daughter rose up and said, let her go her way. Can you allow the power of Christ to reveal itself? And if things get worse, know the power of Christ even overcame death. There is extra power to handle extra worse things. That is, can you allow Jesus to reveal the other part of him? He is extraordinary and he can be extra extraordinary. He can be glorious extraordinary. Allow him to yet reveal another level of his power. Yes, plug in like the, that's that lady. I know it works, it works. I, I, I've seen things that I've, I, me, I've worked with God. And sometimes I wonder, somebody comes up, Bishop, I want to plug in your anointing. I said, no, whatever God has said to you, I listen to the money, I use it for God's work, I give tithe. And somebody said, Bishop, since I give you that 1,000, I've become so rich. I said, God, I will remain righteous so that whoever wants to plug into your anointing me will benefit. That's very important. Aha! My God is powerful. Hallelujah! Now it's important also if you want to plug in, get into level of God's power, have the knowledge of, know the timing and the season of the Holy Spirit. As you pray, as you preach, one of the best things people should have, because the Holy Spirit is the only inheritance that God left with us, who carries all the package, all the plan that God has for us. If you don't understand the timing and the season and the direction the Holy Ghost is taking, you might lose your blessings. Because the Bible says it's the Holy Spirit who searches all things. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says the Holy Ghost searches all things. Even the deep things. Just go there. But go, uh -huh. let's go there very quickly. Aha. Uh -huh. Verse 11. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. For what man know, knows the things of the man except the spirit of the man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. That's very important. If you go up, yes, go there. But in this chapter 2, that is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Then, the Bible says, even so, no one knows, that is verse 11, the things of God except the Spirit of God. Go to verse 10. But God has revealed these things to, to us. Which things? If you go to verse 9, it says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10 says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yet, the deep things of God. Yes, it's not me. It's the Holy Ghost who searches. Even where God has written the kind of, the kind of 
vehicle I'll, I'll buy, the kind of life, the kind of ministry, the calling, churches that were planned, is in God. The Holy Ghost searches all things, even the deep things of God, and bring them to us. You should understand the Holy Spirit. He can search all things about you in God and bring them to you. If you don't have a real fellowship with the Holy Ghost, if you cannot discern and listen to the Holy Spirit, I say to you, you'll never be a Christian of the level of the Bible world. Because these things that God has kept to, for them who love God, love him, are searched by the Holy Ghost and revealed to us by the Holy Ghost. That is the truth. And that's why the Bible says in John 16, 13, when he comes on you, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all the truth. We need to be guided into all the truth. And that's one way of getting into the power of God. That's one way of getting the so know the timing and the seasons of the Holy Spirit and also know the direction of where God wants to glorify himself. Let me say this. God wants to glorify his name. You need to know in which way is God glorified in this issue. In which manner the Spirit of God wants to glorify Christ. Can you detect? If you take that, man, that level, I said, I told that to you enjoy. Don't just be silent there. God is in the business of glorifying his son, glorifying himself, confirming. That's why when Elijah prayed, he said, God, answer me with the fire. That these people will know that you are the only God. And I am your servant. And whatever I've done, I've done in your name. It's good to know which direction is God taking to confirm his name among men. If you know it, you'll be a partner with God in his work. God bless you so much. Know how to go through and get the power of God. That level of God's power, where God abuses his word, where you can confirm, now I sense God is moving with me like Abraham. For he has not judged. Receive their blessings in Christ we pray.